you know? I think the, one of the major points that uh, Eckeld is putting forward is that ecophobia starts developing when a culture has reached a zenith of its power, mm. or at least it's in a very strong yeah. position yeah. in the circle. And he says, he has a really interesting quote in page 34, where he says, and this illustrates another uh, main point of the book that it is sort of a natural outgrowth of society mm -hmm. it, it is a natural development that it's not yeah. that something goes unnaturally it's a natural development of yeah. societies and he says a civilization's fall is therefore not a break with its rise but a direct result and a natural continuation mm -hmm. of it a condition is reached where the truth of all the subsumed cultures are jostling with one another for primacy so that the weary members of that society, tired of fighting, throw up their arms in exasperation and claim all these truths to be equal. The problem is that whereas some members of the society surrender in this way, others do not. And so it is ultimately the truths of those who refuse to give up that will crush the truths of those who side with relativism. This is happening all over the West, but in particular in Europe. I think that's a very powerful quote. I think he's spot on on this yeah. particular quote. Um, and th this is what I was saying when I was summarizing earlier. And I, I, and I do genuinely think this is the, the, the malaise that the West has fallen into, is that when you have a kind of positivist, materialist culture, and I, I just think to the culture I was raised in, um, it was genuinely like Fukuyama's end of history culture, yeah. where... It, no, just be a consumer. There's just literally just enjoy yourself, you know, with yeah. one history, basically. And this takes you out of the continuum of understanding yourself actually not as the end of history, but as a, a component of history in the sort of Burkean continuum of history. And so I felt myself much less to be a bearer of civilization yeah. than I can see foreigners who come to England acting as bearers of civilization, right? Like the, the Pakistani community setting up mosques, the Sikh community setting up temples, the Hindu community setting up temples. These people feel themselves representing Indian or Pakistani culture in Britain as foreign emissaries almost. Yeah. And we in Britain used to treat ourselves on a kind of chess board or risk board where we, we understood, no, no, this is England. And so we act in a particular way. And the, our children will act in a particular way to maintain a certain standard of culture. And that disappeared in the 90s. That just dis in the 80s and 90s, that just liquidated. And, and so like the, the and, and there is a truth that underpins it. Yeah, it's, it's better and it's nice to be comfortable. But there are truths in other cultures that actually the struggle against luxury and laxity also brings with it moral uh, uh, not superiority but a, there's a prize in it right there's a prize in pursuing a metaphysic and actually you're upholding something that's not you know physical but is real and feels right when you and you know you know it when you see it and so these societies that come over and are, you know, these the Muslims who are excessively Islamic, you know, yeah. Rishi Sunak doing Dilwali and 10 Downing Street. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm not angry. I don't blame them for doing that. And I think that if I were to move to a foreign country, I would be much more English than I am in England. You know, I, I'd be... You would miss it. But I also, I would think I, I had an obligation to uphold it, right? It would be weird if you were that country's also prime minister. It's, that would be weird, wouldn't it? Yeah. That, would, that would be weird. If, yeah, yeah ex exactly. It would it'd yes. take on a colonial aspect, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know. Um, but, so I, when he says you know, there's a the 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 truth of all the subsumed cultures are jostling with one another for primacy. So the weary members of society tired of fighting throw up their arms in exasperation and claim all these truths to be equal. Um, that, that I think that is where we are right now, and this is why I think that what we essentially have to do is restore the look back into what our ancestors thought was the genuine truth of this place you know because this the, the we, we need to be able to at least argue in our own favor you yeah. know i don't want to be that guy who's just like well they're all equal no these are just ours i'm going to be parochial about it do you think that what uh this the the fukuyama it wasn't fukuyama's but the injunction to be a consumer consumerism mm. 
is an effort and an attempt to pacify the par some parts of the population. Because if we say that there are some parts of the population and mm. we sort of will maintain a sort of economic security to them, m very often with government funded benefits, mm. we will somehow sustain them as consumers and they will, many of them will have more free time. They'll start developing ecophobic feelings. And yeah. we will have other, let's say, groups that come into the mm. country, whatever country we are talking about. Mm. And they are going to display very different traits and much mm. more aggressive traits. And I do not mean it in a military sense only. No, no, but no, I, I mean, mean in the, yeah. you know, the aggressive entrepreneurial spirit yeah. that must be part yeah. of a society. I mean, that's uh, Aristotle... Mm was saying that, you know, you need a society to function, needs external goods. I, I bet there is and, more laxity in attending mosque in Pakistan than there is in Bradford. Yeah. I bet they, I bet in Pakistan, like, I'll go tomorrow, I'll go later, you know. Like, it, you know, this is the culture where you're always going to do this, you know, I'll do it tomorrow. Whereas in, in, in England, I bet there's much more, like, strict mosque attendance, mm. you know. And and I, I think there probably is some... Truth, what you're saying. Uh, the the only thing is, I don't think it was directed. Right. I think this is a natural outgrowth of essentially the boomers yeah. being the generation after World War II, yeah. because the great civilizational mission of freedom, liberty, um, prosperity was won. Right. Yes. That, that was won after World War II, and there was the Cold War ever in the background. But of course, it never really impinged on the, the material quality of the boomers' lifestyles. So they effectively felt like, okay, we just need to outlast the Soviet Union, which they did. And they could easily point, because the, the, the Soviet Union obviously being a materialist project yeah. and liberalism being a materialist project, they both agreed on what the, the winning condition was going to be. And this is why the Soviet Union is said to have been brought down by blue jeans and Coca-Cola. And, McDo you know, when, when a McDonald's was first made in Russia, well, I remember yeah. it. I remember it, you know, in the 90s. And it was a, it was a monumental thing. It was, like, considered to be, like, the, the, it was never expressed this way. But that was the, the obvious victory of Western liberalism, yeah. right, over communism. Because the, the, the terms of the fight were on who's going to be prosperous. It's not who's going to be moral. It's not who's going to have the most valiant heroes. It's not, you know, nothing yes. metaphysical. It's all just material. And I can totally understand that when non-materialist cultures come into the West, I can understand why they gain contempt for the West, because they, uh, and this is one of the things that the grooming gangs, often, the, 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 one of the reasons they were contemptuous against the English girls is that they were failed Christians. Yeah. Like if they were upholding Christianity, the Muslims would respect them, but they don't because they're atheists, you know, but the Muslims don't think of it that way. Um, and so, the, but they're saying, well, why aren't you essentially adhering to your own metaphysics? You know, you are a failure at your own standard. And it's, I can, un I can understand why they're contemptuous yeah. of us, right? And I can understand why our own look at foreigners come in and have a sort of mystical standard to uphold and go, wow, you know, they've got something we don't because they do have something we don't, Yeah, you know? So in a sense, that's the, th the, the main issue that when we have population, a, a segment of the population that develops ecophobic feelings mm. and we have another segment of the population, an incoming segment of the population that displays very different traits. Mm. And these traits frequently are linked with a generation of wealth. And not only. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, what, what, what do you mean uh, linked with the generation of wealth? Like that, okay, so if we have a an surge in statism hmm. and a surge in the mentality that we need to give to create an economy and a society just on benefits, mm -hmm. and that this is something that basically we follow the roles in, or, or if we follow the roles in model, hmm. and we say that we sort, we need constantly to think of how each policy we are going to take is going to cr make the worse off better by state intervention. Mm. We have a segment of the population, the educated, mm. those who know, mm. let's say those who are familiar with these ideas, who instead of saying, let us try to be, let us try to engage in entrepreneurship, mm. let us try to create wealth, they start thinking, let us think of how we disseminate wealth mm. and let us instead of just being industrious 
and producing, let us focus on how we disseminate. Mm. So the incoming population will take progressively more the economy because they're going to, let's say, display the economic traits mm. that are required to generate wealth that will then be disseminated. Mm. But, and there is a sort of, uh, I think that th this is a potential issue. Mm. Yeah. I think the um, the attitude of foreign people towards Western welfare systems is probably one of bewilderment as well. Yeah. Like, why are you just giving me free money? I mean, if you're going to be stupid enough to give me free money, you're fine. You know? but, but you are, I, I yeah. agree with you. I think there is... Um, okay. Yeah. And just one observation. It seems to me that the idea of... There is a sort of cultural conceit, mm. especially when... A culture is at the zenith of its power. Oh yes, because and when a, a culture, I, I, I'm thinking of the U.S. society, especially mm. after the Cold War. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there it seems to me to be zero bipartisanship after the mid '90s. Yeah, because the, before, during the Cold War, yeah. it was uh, usual to see both Republicans and Democrats in somehow a governmental uh, uh, in the in a, there was definitely in the pre less presidential yeah there, there was definitely um a sort of strings that attached them yes. to each other as what what we would in britain call the yeah. loyal opposition right because there was an outside enemy there was yeah. the soviet union communism yeah. was rampaging and the, yeah. the democrats weren't communists or at least not like they are now they were yeah. still americans in their hearts mm -hmm. you know um but now, I mean, they, they, you know, they, they were patriotic. But the there are enemies also now. And do you think, do you get the impression, I get well, the impression that they focus much more on each other than on external enemies. I don't it's, know it's if they... the Machiavellian thing once again. I think there's a kind of arrogance uh, to the West at the moment where we don't understand that there are enemies. Uh, we think that we have conquered them all. Yeah. We think we've won everything. And that, like, like the arrogance, I think, was well exemplified in Biden and the Ukraine war. He thought he was going to destroy the ruble. It's like, no, you just destroyed the dollar, actually. You know, or at least you know, severely weakened it. Um, and I think that kind of arrogance is a bit of a slap, uh, that, that kind of event is a bit of a slap in the face. For those people like, well, that didn't go as I thought it was gonna go. So yeah, because you were living in a world of delusion. You are not actually as powerful as you think you are. And there are people who hate you, who are not, in, who are not weak, you know? And so it's, it's, it's probably, what happens towards the end of empires, actually. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.